Why electronics? Why emerald stuff? Why do you like coding and electronics? Is it about the passion or do you need money? Or maybe you haven't decided your career path yet. I'll tell you one thing, because when you make stuff work, oh boy, does it feel good. Right, this is going to be fun, so let's start. So guys, this should be some kind of a guideline for the NFT, right? Wrong. What I am about to discuss is you getting started into Embedded World. That's my goal, because I like being in Embedded World as well. It feels kind of nice. When you want to build up your knowledge about some subject in life, start simple. I will develop some simple applications, which are going to showcase how you basically start evolving within and inside Embedded World. And it seems to me that Necto has the advantage. Why? It saves product development time, and time is money. That's one thing. And the other thing, because of the whole ecosystem around it, which again saves you time. So let's talk about it, but briefly, I don't want to bother you about, about the Necto product itself, because it's just a tool for you to get the job done. I want to showcase how you can create something on your own, just like I did in the beginning of this episode, by using this tool and subsequently earn some gig in the big tech company and generate some money flow into your wallet. Okay, Necto Studio. This is how it looks like. Mac, Windows, Linux, it can perform on all of them. If you do not have it installed on your computer machine, I mean, come on, you've got to have it installed. I will be doing the installation of Nectar right now. If you have it installed, just use YouTube progress bar to skip it, to skip this installation process, because I do not want to waste your time. Okay, guys, go to mikri.com slash Nectar, select your preferred OS, and start downloading it. After download, start the installation process of Nectar Studio. Okay, click next. Okay, choose the install spot. I prefer not to use the OS partition for the installation of any software on my computer machine because of three things. Number one, I install software frequently. I delete it even faster because I adapt to the marketplace demands and I want to know the exact location, the common place for all of my apps. Number two, OS could crash. Number three, I write scripts so I could harm the OS files inadvertently. Okay, I finished my rent, let's move on. Okay, click next, select components and uncheck all. Why? Let's do the first principles thinking, which basically says question everything. What do we've got here? IDE itself. Okay, I need it. This is what I'm installing right now. So I will include it into installation process. Okay, next up is some kind of software development environment or SDK in short. Basically, bunch of files which describe embedded protocols and microcontroller definitions. Okay, that's cool. I could use that. And the last one, compilers or how to get your code prepared for a microcontroller to understand it. There are several of compilers, so several families of, of microcontrollers as well. So I will select them all because in example, maybe I will be needing a low power microcontroller for my GPS tracking on battery project or vice versa, maybe I need a microcontroller which is going to be a flagship one, a top-notch MCU with all the advanced settings. Okay, I'll minimize this and hit next. License stuff being shown here. In essence, Nectar comes along with two license types, commercial and community. That's it. Okay, I accept the license. Then click next, start menu shortcuts. That's cool. You can rename it if you want. I'm fine. I'm down with this one. Then click next. And finally, click install and run Nectar Studio. During the initial run of Nectar, you will be prompted to install another add-on software, which is called CodeGrip Suite. CodeGrip is a programmer debugger device. CodeGrip Suite is in essence an interface from which you configure CodeGrip device. That's it, simple as that. Okay, make sure to install this suite as well. Right, so this is the landing page. This is the code icon, so if you want to code your project, click over here. So this is the space where the magic happens. On the right hand side of this code workspace, there are a set of tools which are going to help you create the magic. Right now, I just want to start typing some code, so let's generate new project. 
I'm going to select a new, then I'm going to give some name to my project. After that, I need to select what type of my project will be. Okay. But how could I know of what type my project will be? Well, <laughs> developing an RC car could be a project, right? So writing some code for this RC car is basically an application. So I just basically described the first type of an embedded project within Necto, an application type. Let's do the second. Okay, designer. Fashion designer? Not exactly. State of headline. Where I stood. With this type of project, you can develop something like this. So in essence, with the designer project, you can generate beautiful visual apps, graphical user interfaces, or GUIs in short. Next type of a project would be a library. Now, because I want to, for example, develop some crazy state-of-the-art electronics, like this one over here, I need a lot of code to be written. One part of my code is going to deal with sensing whether a battery is running low on juice, Another piece of code is going to manage those brushless DC motors. And one piece of code could talk with satellites in order to get the global position of my drone. The best way to compartmentalize all those pieces of code is to logically separate them into blocks, libraries, and then use those libraries to develop your drone. And the final type is library with examples. After creating libraries for a drone, that I talked about a moment ago, the best practice is to generate a set of examples in order to test your drone capabilities. Now that you understand what basic types of embedded projects are there, we can go even further. Okay, for this episode, I'm going to pick the first project type, application. Clicking next is going to lead me to a setups page. Hmm. Now I can wrap up my setup by placing my microcontroller I selected into this development board, which already has a programmer debugger device on it. Now, optionally, if I have selected my project to be a designer, I could have inserted some display as well, but that's an optional. And that's it, theory of setups explained. Let's generate a setup for our application. I'm going to start by searching for the name of microcontroller. What do we have in here? The name of the microcontroller is PIC18 F47K42. So the first thing in the setups menu is the compiler, which is going to generate machine code out of my future source code. I will be showing two possible ways on how to determine what compiler I need based on the name of a microcontroller I'm currently holding in my hand. One way would be utilize the Bible in the embedded world, a datasheet. Datasheet of a microcontroller. You search for the core name and you will get your result back. Another way would be visit Necto webpage, then choose supported MCUs, and finally type in name of a microcontroller. Architecture column is going to give me final answer. Well, PIC it is then. Okay, let's return to the setups menu. I'm going to select PIC as a compiler for this setup. Then I'm going to click next. Development board is the next item to be selected. Since I was using a solderless breadboard, just like this one, in the beginning of this episode, I'm going to go and select generic board for now. Then I'm going to click next. I need to select what microcontroller I will be using for this setup. I already know, so here it is. Pick 18 F47 K42. Nice. I will be clicking next. Display selection. I do not need it for this project for my application. So I will say no display. Then click next. Programmer device is the last item. It says code grip. This guy, this programmer debugger device could work over USB and Wi-Fi, which is awesome. But let's make this episode simple and use the USB-C cable, which is already connected, which would ultimately power up my microcontroller as well as give me opportunity to debug it. Because code grip automatically discovered itself, I am able to wrap up my setup. I will be clicking finish button, which in turn is going to start generating my setup my hardware software combo. After finishing up, I always rename my setup to something meaningful to me. Then click finish. And that is it. 
from this point on, I'm able to write down my idea, to write my code. In the lower right corner of Necto, I could check up my setup that I just created and I can modify it if necessary by simply clicking on it. In the right corner of Necto, I'm able to visualize Project Explorer and in the central part of Necto, I've got main.c file opened for me. I can't wait anymore. I will start creating some code in a moment. Hello world sentence, globally known in the programming community, is here to inspire young lads getting into programming stuff. Because we talk embedded, something visual must happen. Light emitting diode must blink. Looking at the datasheet of this microcontroller, PIC 18 f 47 k 42 if I want to blink an LED on this microcontroller's pin, or technically speaking, if I want to set up a pin to have digital output functionality and to modify its voltage state from low to high or vice versa, I need latch register or Latin short and twist register or data direction register, which is going to set up my pin to be digital output. And for example, I could select pin B0 to modify its output state basically to blink an LED with this pin. Naturally, in order to power up this microcontroller, I have connected VDD and VSS pins with the CodeGrip programmer device. I have connected the master clear pin with the CodeGrip as well. And the last but not least, programmer pins, data and clock. I have connected them with the CodeGrip as well. Back to the code editor. So once again, I need twist register, twist B, register to be precise because I'm dealing with the pin which resides on a port B of this microcontroller and I want to make this pin as an output. Next up would be a LAT register. Once again LAT B, bit 0 and I want it to be cleared so no voltage will be applied to it. Give it some delay for a human eye to perceive the change of a voltage state then power this pin up. After that, once again, give it some delay. And how did I get those trees and LUT registers? Where are they defined? By placing cursor on one of those registers, then pressing F2 on your keyboard, you can get all the definitions for this MCU. Because this change of voltage state is in the infinite file loop, a light emitting diode will constantly blink. It feels nice seeing the actual result of your idea, right? If you want to program this exact code right now, but you don't have this microcontroller at your home, at your house. Check out Planet Debug feature, which is located in the Necto ID. Yep, you will be able to program this code from your home. But I do not want to reveal too much. So let's wrap up this episode. Starting to code to program some stuff on your own could be done without an ID, by just utilizing a plain text editor and a terminal window of your operating system just like that. IDEs are here to help speed up the development process. Necto ID, even though not so much your product, could speed up the, the process for your next project. With this episode, I wanted to showcase how is it like starting to interact with a simple embedded project within Necto. Trust me, there is much more. But until the next episode, write down your idea, prepare everything for execution, then execute. Ciao.